Oke, okay, hello everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you for uh, joining me. Okay, to study uh, in this um, in this class with the topic uh, calculus. Sorry, the, the subject calculus, calculus one. So basically, um, calculus. Uh, calculus one is the basic, basic uh, mathematics subject. Okay, you normally will take uh, this subject during your first semester. Okay, uh, and obviously you have uh, to at least has some basic background uh, of, I think uh, it should be at least additional mathematics as well as uh, mathem mathematics. Uh, I mean, during your matriculation or if you don't take a mathematics in your matricula uh, during your matriculation class uh, i think uh, you should at least take smu smu okay smu 3013 okay uh, because if if you don't i'm afraid that you might have some problem but it's up to you if uh, whether you want to stay in this class uh, or not because uh, i've i've been mentioned that some of you uh, do not have any any like uh, basic background uh, during matriculation as well as uh, do not take uh, smu okay but you can try. But if you have problem, I advise you to uh, drop this subject. I mean, if you have problem to understand uh, the content of this subject, uh, uh, I mean, I'm not sure when is the last date for you to drop this subject, but uh, you, you can have like uh, several weeks to try, okay? If you have problems, then I advise you to drop, to drop the subject. But it's fine. I think it's not too difficult if you put a lot of effort, uh, to, um, to catch up, to catch up, uh, uh with me. Okay. So, um, so it is just the extension of uh the derivation sorry uh, derivative and integration that you have learned during your uh, additional mathematics okay uh, when when it was in uh, form five okay uh, so we will learn uh, so like before you might uh, learn that uh, the derivative of let's say a function f is equal to y okay the derivative of uh, f equal to y is equal to one isn't it okay or maybe let's say you have a function y y is it sorry sorry uh sorry i think uh we have to uh, repeat again so let's say you have like how do we move this uh, panel okay let's say you have here mm. y is equal to 2x okay so the derivative of uh, of y with respect to x is equal to 2. So this is what you have already learned during your additional mathematics. But how do you get this thing? I'm afraid you never know. Okay? You, you might know that it is somehow from the power rules. Like if you have y is equal to, let's say, um, ax to the power of n then the derivative of uh, y with respect to x will be given by what a multiply with n multiply with x to the power of n minus one so i think this is this is what you 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 always memorize 
uh, during your during your additional mathematics class without understanding why this happens, right? So in this uh, subject, you will understand, understand how you get this kind of uh, formula. Okay, so it is actually from the limit, uh, limit, um, limits definitions, the definitions of the limits, okay. And then, uh, and then if you look at the book I have uh, shared with you, okay, I've shared uh, a link that somehow from the link you can uh, download a book, a, a soft copy of a book, okay. So the book is uh, by Anton, okay. With the yellow cover, okay. Um, so there's a lots of uh, topic in this book. So the first uh, chapter will be the root of calculus for the students. And then we have a zero chapter, which is before calculus. So I expect all of you to read uh, for, for the contents of before calculus. And then because of, for, for the class, for this class, we will straight, straight away go to the first chapter, okay? We will straight away go to the first chapter, which is the limits and continuity. So this is the limits that we, we, are, we were talking about, okay? The limit which is related to the derivative, okay? Uh, we have to understand uh, the definition of the limits as well as to as well as uh, have to understand the continuity before we go to the derivative, okay? So the purpose of this class is not about memorizing on how do you differentiate uh, y equal to x squared, no. We already know the answer, which is uh, dy dx is equal to um, two x, okay? If uh, y is equal to x squared. Okay. So let's say if you have y equal to x cubed, then it is obviously uh, the derivative of y with respect to x will be uh, 3x to the power of 2. Okay, so we already know that. Okay, but how do you get that? And how do you actually uh, understand uh, the mathematics behind it? That is all you want to understand in this class. Um, for the integration as well. So if before you on, I'm not sure how do you understand integration, okay? Uh, integration is something which is very important, okay? And then obviously it's, uh, it is uh, the, it is actually um, related to a function, okay? I hope you already know that uh, the integration of a function is actually the summations, the, the area, the area under the graph, okay? So at least you already know that, okay? Mm, and then obviously, uh, when we, are, we, we talk about derivative, we have to talk about integrations, okay? Because uh, it's just um, what we call it, it's, uh, is um is very re related okay it's very related um and then what and then we will uh, after the first chapter we will uh, stu study about the derivative and then we will go to the topic in different sessions okay and then we will relate the derivative with graphing graphing and applications so um, so in this uh, topic here, the graphing and applications, uh, we will uh, study um, the shape, the shape of the functions without having to plot, having to plot the, the graph. But we can predict the shape of the function by, investigating the derivative, 
okay? By investigating uh, the derivative of each of the um, intervals, intervals in a uh, for a functions, we can actually somehow predict the shape of the graph for the function. So that is what we're gonna learn uh, in our fourth chapter, okay? And after that, uh, we go to the integrations. And uh, for the integration, I've mentioned before, there's a lots of application as well, okay? If we have a single integration, then it will be related to the area under the graph. But not only that, if you have a double integration, then somehow it will be the volume. Okay? So it doesn't stop at area. It will continue up to, let's say, volume at least, okay? For the three-dimension case. Okay, and then... Uh, and then, of course, uh, we will go to the application. Okay, I've mentioned that. And then we go to the principle of the integration, integral evaluation. And then uh, we continue with the infinite series. So the infinite series, which is in chapter 9, will be our last, our last chapter. So that's it. Okay, it's not too... It's not... Uh, too much for you to cater in 14 weeks okay uh, some of it are just a revision uh, for your i mean uh, for your additional mathematics okay and then uh for 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 this subject obviously you have to do a lots of exercises okay i'm ex expecting you to uh to do a lots of exercises because uh, even though you might will be having um uh i mean uh at home assessment like uh, like in the previous semester but still you have to do it very quickly okay and in order for you to do um the calculation uh very quickly in in the uh, expected time frame you need to have a very good understanding and a very good uh, background in calculus okay because um even though you might have uh, this book with you when uh, when you um when you answer your assessment questions but still you cannot uh you cannot refer to all uh, this uh, contents without first you understand it, okay? You, you won't have uh, that much time. Uh, and then um, anything you want to share with me? Okay, anyone? Any of you want to share your views or opinion about this subject or uh, what do you think about this subject? Are you really excited? <laughs> excited to to be with me for this? Uh, I mean, uh, thirteen weeks. Okay, we we still have like thirteen week left because uh, I was awarded for like one week. Okay. Um. I was expecting some response actually, but it's fine. The silence from the class is uh, equally appropriate, so it's fine. Um, okay, let's start then uh, now. Okay. Anyone want to speak? Nuriza? Nuriza, so uh, far. Hello? Yes. Uh, hi. Hello. Hi, good morning. Okay. Um, okay, can, you, can you switch on your your uh, webcam because uh, the class might want to to know you okay 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 what what is the view that you want to share with me with us uh, today okay, uh... I think uh, I feel very excited uh, to join this calculus class because okay. 
saya memang minat nak join calculus ni. Okay. Uh, so, uh, which, course ni saya are you from? which course are you from, uh, Noriza? Uh, AT14. AT14, which is mathematics, huh? Yes. So, you might... What, you might see me a lot, I mean, uh, during this four, four years course, okay? Uh, saya harap saya dapat uh, fokus dalam kelas kalkulus ni, eh. perform lah dalam subjek ni sebab saya memang minat kalkulus lah. Okay, good. Anything else? Yeah, that's all for me. Thank you. Okay. Anyone? Anyone else? Anyone? Uh, uh, madam, can okay. I talk? Speaking now. Uh, Amiro Lukman. Okay, good. Yeah, uh, first of all. Okay. I want uh, a little bit thanks to you, madam, because apa ni, uh, Emilia? Saya nak ucap terima Amiro, kasih lah pada. Before that, could you please mention your your course? Okay. Uh, saya daripada kos biologi AT11. Okay. So uh, ramai juga kawan-kawan saya AT11 ni yang masuk dalam kelas doktor. Okay. Tapi uh, sebelum tu kami nak ucap terima kasih lah kerana doktor sudi terima kami. Okay. Uh, sebab macam AT11 banyak masalah untuk uh, apa ni? Untuk minor mat ni, untuk asset de, uh, dalam kelas so, jarang. So, what kind of problem semua. that you are facing? Like, we can uh, enter class like linear algebra and mathematics because sebab penuh. Okay. Ni pun, uh, calculus pun kita macam uh, sebelum ni tak boleh nak masuk, tak boleh nak masuk. Lepas tu ada jumpa fakulti apa semua. Lepas baru lah okay. boleh masuk apa semua. Uh, then, Uh, I hope uh, apa ni kelas ni uh, saya dapat uh, belajar banyak ilmu lah tentang matematik dalam kelas ni. Ah uh, tu sajalah. Okay, thank you Amiro. So I understand it very well uh, the problem uh, with uh, this uh, I mean some subject in uh, mathematics department. The problem of uh, uh, that that we are facing is uh, there's too many students. Okay? So we, we don't only get uh, um, our students from the mathematics department like from AT14 and AT48 only, okay? We have like from various, various uh, courses like uh, from this faculty, FS, SFM, FSM's faculty as well as other faculties, uh, AC10, AT10, okay? So at the eleven, okay. So we, we, we and other than what, uh, other than that, we are we are having problem with the shortage of uh lecturer, okay. Uh, so some some of you uh will take uh this subject as a minor subject as well, but uh somehow. It's a good thing actually that the students nowadays uh, like mathematics so much that we they want to pick up, uh, this uh, subject or mathematics uh, subjects as their minor. So that is the problem that we are facing. Okay. Uh, but uh, please, uh, so, so that's why you have to bear with me. I have a lots of students. I have a lots of students to... Uh, for me to handle first, okay. So my uh, class, um, my class, I have like four classes, okay. So each of the class has over 50 students. And that's a lot of students for me to handle, okay. Like I mentioned before, I like to set rules. I hope all of you follow my rules, okay. Uh like um like uh, you have seen uh, in our whatsapp group uh before like i've mentioned like two times already you don't have to type my names whenever you want to say something i will read all the message okay that uh th that you write in the whatsapp group
okay because i don't like uh, to to get the beep sound it's like you are you, you are forcing me to read it like instantly okay and have i i have a lots of things to to think as well uh, other than uh, focusing on the whatsapp group so that is one thing so it's proof that not all of you follow rules okay and then during the submission submission of all the uh, assignments as well as your final assessment you might not know about this but your your attitudes uh, during the submissions of the assignments might also uh, cause me headache okay but because i i've mentioned i, I will mention it se several times that you have to compile all the uh, work in a one pdf file okay one pdf file but not all follow that rules some of you might send like uh several pages all together and might it, it might be not in a pdf form it might be a word document or maybe jpg jpg file and it might be it, it might be not um um, I mean, small matter for you, but it will cost me a lots of problems. It will take me a lots of uh, a lots of time to sort that kind of uh, thing. Okay, I I will always uh, mention the rules. I hope all of you may um, will follow the rules. Like in uh, I faced that one uh, during my uh, I mean previous semester. Uh, and I think uh, for this semester, I have to set uh, some other rules <laughs> that might uh, make you want to follow the rules that I, I've set. Like maybe I will deduct some marks if you don't follow my, my rules, especially um, when, you, um, when you submit the, the assignments. Okay, assignments or assessments because uh, it's not about 10 or 20 students that I'm handling with. I'm handling like more than 200 students. One, one or two students uh, that cause uh, that kind of uh, problem might be, um, might be okay. But if half of you did that, I mean do that, then uh, it will obviously... Uh, make me um, make me headache okay so anyone else want to share okay no one so we got the okay so who's speaking now okay my name is Mama Zafi uh, I'm one of uh, 80 10 student 80, 10. Uh, which is uh, special education okay good just want to say thank you to doctor because set us for this class. Uh, actually, I'm student that keep chatting you during this week. Yeah, I noticed that. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Okay. Okay, anyone? Anyone else? Uh, Assalamualaikum, Doctor. Okay. Uh, my name is Fatiha. I am I from 1811. Uh, can I speak in Lee? Yeah. Uh, yeah, if your friend understand Malay, I hope uh, I hope so. <laughs> saya Sam Lima, Sam ni, dan saya minor match. Uh, macam kawan-kawan saya yang dah ambil uh, subjek ni, tapi dia orang ambil beginning calculus. Jadinya Sam lepas saya tak dapat ambil sebab uh, clash dan uh, penuh. Lepas tu saya decide nak ambil Sam ni. Bila saya nak ambil Sam ni, dia kata tak buka. So saya kena ambil calculus one. Jadi saya tanya, Betul ke saya kena masuk kelas ni ke? Saya kena tunggu sampai ke beginning ke kelas tu buka ke? Saya kena ambil I'm juga. I'm not sure about that. You have to wait for the... Uh, I I don't know about that. You are from AC10? 8011. 8011. 8011 is biology. Ah, yes. You are from which uh, semester? I'm from semester five. Semester five. 
semester 5 should be taking beginning calculus. But why no beginning calculus offering? I don't know. Ah, uh, Saya dah tanya uh, Dr. Fauzi. Maksud dia kata ini memang tak buka. Jadi saya ambil je lah. I think, I think uh, you have to wait first. But you can... Uh, uh, the add drop subject will uh, will be postponed un until uh, next week, right? The due the due should be uh, tomorrow. The due date will be tomorrow, but somehow the academic will postpone it to next week, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, and. Uh, um, I'm not sure who you should refer to, but uh, Dr. Fauzi is better than me about this curriculum. Okay? Um, okay. So you so might want saya... to update with, uh, with him. So, buat masa sekarang saya masuk kelas doktor boleh okay. kan? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's all. Thank you, doctor. Okay, yeah? Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, I hope that's all. <laughs> I mean, uh, the response from you, uh, we have to somehow continue with our, with our subject, okay? Uh, all the chatty-chatty can continue later, okay? And all the things uh, about uh, curriculum, you can, you can try to ask. Because you can Sorry? Okay. Sorry? Sorry, can you say, say it again? I beg your pardon, please. Huh? Rasanya dia terbuka mic tu, Doktor. Dia terbuka kawan dia. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, let's continue with, uh, with our subject. Okay. So, firstly, what do you understand about limits? Okay. What... What is the what is um, the definition of the limit that you understand? What is limit? I'm approaching my limit. Uh, I'm I'm uh, that is uh, might be uh, the words that you always uh, mention. You push me to my limits. So what do you understand about limits? Okay. What what is limit? Maximum. It's not a, It's not something which is maximum. What is limit? What is limit? How do you define limit for a function? Approach. Yeah, the the uh, the keyword is approach. It's approaching something. It's approaching something, but it's not the maximum. It's not like uh uh, it's already the maximum uh value. No, uh, it's approaching. It's approaching uh to the very near to the to the end point. Something like that. Okay. So that is limit. So uh, before before that, uh, we can have like um, the drawing of a function. So let's draw uh, draw a function here. Okay. So let's say you have you have uh, y is equal to x squared. So you, this is a parabolic function. Okay. So this is a parabolic function, y is equal to x squared. Okay, and then uh, like, uh, and then and then here you have a you have a point. Okay. You have a point, a fixed point, okay, uh, and this fixed point, you might want to denote it as P x naught naught, 
because it is fixed with respect to two coordinates values. Uh, one is x and another one is y. So we have uh, two coordinate here. One is x naught, another one is y naught. Okay, so you have uh, one point here with respect to the coordinate x as well as y. So when I say fixed point, it doesn't move. So this point doesn't move. And then let's say you have another point here, q, x, y. Okay, when I say q, x, y, so this is a variable. It is not a fixed point. Okay, it is not something which is already set. So when I say variable, it means that it can move. It can move. Okay, uh, it can move towards this point. So that is what uh, I say. Okay. And then uh, let's say you draw a line which is connecting these two points, okay? a straight line. Somehow uh, my hand doesn't always agree with my brain. I want it to draw it as a straight line, but somehow my hand doesn't permit it. Okay, so this is, <laughs> sorry, this is a... Uh, this is a very bad drawing. Eh? And we adjust it. Okay. So it should be quadratic. Should be quadratic. Okay. And then we have a point here. Oh, can, can we redraw it again? I think I need to redraw it. It's too messy here. Okay. Okay, so we have a quadratic function. Okay, so this is a quadratic function looks like. And then we have a point here. P, X, not, Y, not, a fixed point. And then we have a, a another point. And somehow this... Uh, this point here, Q, is not a fixed point. It is a variable. It is a, it is a, I mean, Q is with respect to variable X as well as variable Y. And these variables X and Y are not fixed. So it can move, this, P, this Q here, it can move along the graph. It can move along the graph, okay? And then somehow I want to draw a straight line, a straight line that connects these two points, okay? And uh, this straight line here, okay, this straight, straight line here is known as second line. It's called a second line, okay? And somehow, okay, so this is y, this is our x. Um, and since I've mentioned it before, like this Q here can move, okay, so it can move towards this point P, okay, is it okay? This point Q here can move along this graph Y equal to X squared up to, uh, to, uh, a location which is not at the point P, but very close to point, point Q, uh, sorry, point P. Okay, so it can move. And what happens to this uh, second line when this uh, point Q move? So what will be uh, happening to this point? So let's draw another, uh, another graph. Okay, it's the same graph. Okay of y equal to x squared, okay? And then we still have uh, point P there, P x naught, y naught, okay? But somehow with the Q move toward this point P, okay? So it means that the, the Q is very close to P. The Q is very close to P, and the, the, the previous second, second line, so if you not, 
note in the previous graph before, in this graph here, um, the second line somehow touched the graph twice. One, it, one is at P, another one is at point Q. Okay? But if uh, the Q is moving towards P, it will give uh, it will give the illustrations that our second line will only touch the graph only once instead of twice. You understand what uh, understand what I mean by by the illustrations? Okay. Yeah. So before it looks like it touched the graph twice. But as Q is moving towards P, somehow, okay, by your own eyes, it looks like the second line only touch the uh, the graph of Y equal to X squared, this graph here. So this is a, the quadratic graph, Y equal to X squared, parabola, um, only once, okay? So now you know that the second line here is now called tangent line. Okay? So the definition of tangent line is the line that touch the graph only once. I, I, I think you already know that. Okay? So this is when the Q is approaching, approaching a point P. It is approaching towards point P. So that's why I said maximum is not the correct words. Okay, because our P is not the maximum. Okay, but it's approaching. It's getting nearer. It's getting nearer to P. Okay, so that is the definition of the limit. Okay, and then... Uh, and then uh, I think you can read this. Okay. Um, now uh, let's go uh, to page uh, 70. Okay. Um, we have here a function y equal to x squared minus x plus 1. Okay. This one is also a corrective function. Uh, x squared minus x plus 1, okay? Uh, and somehow, the questions ask you uh, to find the limit as x approaching 2. x approaching 2. So this is what the questions uh, ask you. So in, other, in a mathematical... Um, way of writing it this is how it looks like so the limit of y the limit of y as x tends to 2 so find this so that is what the questions is actually asking you for okay the limit of y as x tends to 2 where your y is x squared minus x plus plus one so if if you look at uh, the function our function here is y equal to x squared minus x plus one so it is a polynomial function okay a polynomial is uh if it is order one it might be uh a x plus b Okay, so this is uh, when you have a polynomial of order 1. Okay, and then uh, if you have, let's say, ax squared plus bx squared plus c, then this is a polynomial of order 2. And it continues up to the polynomial of whatever order. Okay, whatever order that we can have, like maybe order 100 or order 1000 or something like that. Okay, uh, but whatever it is, uh, when we when we when we talk about polynomial, it has a very unique property. It has a very unique property that is it doesn't contains any singularity. It doesn't contains any singularity. 
is always continuous, okay? It's always continuous. When I say it's continuous, it means there is no jump. There is no jump on the graph. We don't expect any singularities on the graph. So let's say uh, this is the graph, okay? So obviously it is uh, the, the graph, uh, x squared minus x plus one. There is no hole. There is no hole on this graph that doesn't, uh, that does, does not define the graph, okay? So the values for the function y is defined for the whole interval from negative infinity up to infinity. It's always defined. It's not like, it's not like for, for let's say you have a step function. If you have a step function, uh, so let's say y is equal to uh, 1 when x is uh, less than 1, okay? And somehow y is equal to 2 when x is uh, greater than or equal to 1. So if you want to draw uh, this step function, okay? So this is a step function. Uh, so for x less than 1, so this is a 1 here. Uh, y is equal to 1. So it's a straight line, okay? It's a horizontal line, okay? And it doesn't define at x equal to 1. So we will have hollow dots here. We will have hollow dots because this is x less than 1 instead of x less than or equal to 1. It doesn't include 1, okay? And then somehow for this part here, we have x greater than or equal to 1. Uh, the y is given by 2. So this is 1 and this is 2. Okay. So here you have uh, another horizontal line. And for this case, x is greater than or equal to 1. It means that it's include 1. So instead of hollow dots, you will have full dots. Full dots. But if you imagine, if you imagine that you are walking along this graph of y, after you reach here, you will somehow have to jump to, to get to another part, another parts of the graph. You understand what I mean? Okay, so it means that this uh, graph here is not continuous. If you say it is continuous, it means that you don't have to jump. Okay, and then this kind of things, this kind of problem that you have to jump won't happen for a polynomial. For any poly polynomial, even though it is uh, of order 1000, it's always continuous, it's always smooth. You don't have to jump whenever you walk along the line, you walk along the graph. So there is no singularities. Singularities, um, I'm not sure, you you ever heard about singularity before or not singularity is some is a is a point where the function fail to define when or when at that point so let's say you have a rational function so uh, that is why i think uh, my, uh mathematics subject like smu is very important because all these definition that i've mentioned like um, rational function, polyno polynomial functions are uh, all the function that will you will learn during mathematics subject, right? Okay, but it's okay as long as uh, you revise it. Uh, I think you, you are okay. So y is, let's say y is equal to 1 over x. So this is what? What function? This is a reci reciprocal function, right? It is a reciprocal function. A uh, reciprocal function, reciprocal function, is not always defined from negative infinity up to infinity. There's one singularity. There's one point that makes this function undefined. When I say undefined, it means that if you press this. 
uh, if you substitute, let's say, x equal to 0 for this function here, your calculator will give you math error. So that is undefined. Okay? So the undefined words means the function will, will not... How, how do we say that? Um, how, okay. how do we say this? Like, it, it won't happen. Okay? That it won't give any value. So, so it means that if if you if you try to draw one over x, the graph of one over x will look something like this. It will look something like this. It will look something like this. This is a reciprocal function. And uh, if you look at uh, this, um, and this this is for the other side. If you and this is when x equal to zero, okay. If you look at closely at this part here, the graph won't touch the y axis here. So what does it mean? When x is equal to zero, there is no y which is defined, okay. So that is uh, a reciprocal function. And somehow, obviously, reciprocal function is not a polynomial. So it doesn't share the same properties as, prop as, uh, as a polynomial function. Okay, so we continue um, with the, our previous function, which is a polynomial. So this is our polynomial function. Okay, uh, so... So the polynomial, uh, for the polynomial, it won't be any singularity. It won't be any uh, any um, number or any x that makes the function defined undefined. Sorry, uh, it won't make you jump if you walk along the graph. Okay, so it's always smooth. So for this kind of function. The limit as x tends to 2 is actually equal to f of 2. The limit of y as x tends to 2 is always equal to f of 2. Okay? Is it clear? Without having to, uh, to make this kind of table. Without having to make this kind of table, you already know that the limit of y as x tends to 2 is equal to f of 2. So it means that you have, you just have to substitute what will be the value of y when x is equal to 2. So if you calculate it here, you will have 2 squared minus 2 plus 1, which will give you 3, which is actually the same answer as given by uh, by this book. But how do they get this is actually from the table, okay? Uh, they somehow uh, make this kind of table. So one is uh, x for those uh, located to the left of two, okay? And another, uh, other values of x are those for the values of x located to the right of, to the right of 2, okay? So we, we can um, decide several uh, points along the way. So we start from 1, and here from the right, we start from 3, okay? So 1 is located to the left of 2, and 3 is located to the left of, uh, sorry, to the right of, and then you take several val values of x, which is somehow approaching towards the points 2. And from here, it's approaching from the right, and this is approaching from the, from the left. Okay, before that, uh, I, uh, I'm not sure if you can see my screen, or uh, do you see my face or my screen, actually? I can see both. Oh, both. both yes. okay. Just both focus doctor. on the screen. You don't have to both. see to see my face actually. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, and then uh, 
and then obviously we have to uh, to to choose and there's a uh, and the the choice of x is all is not always equal distance you don't have to choose x so that it is equally distance like this is 1.0 this is 1.1, this is 1.3, this is 1.4, and so on, up to this is 1.9. That is not how we do it, okay? Uh, it should not be equally distant, okay? But it, it will look somehow like uh, it's approaching. It's approaching towards 2. So if you have, let's say, uh, 0.2 here, it's, if you start from 1, from the left, the second one that you want to consider might be 1.9, okay? And then the, the, the third point will be 1.99. And the fourth point will be 1.999, okay? That's it. I think uh, four is already enough. So that is how I decide the, look, the, the points, which is... Uh, which should be should be in our table okay it's not it's not like you you choose uh, the points with the equally distance okay and then uh, let's say you have uh, for for uh sorry um for the right hand side you choose 3 okay is you start from 3 okay so it will be what Two point. The the second point will be what? Two point. So here should be. Two point zero. Two two point one. Okay. Two point one. Okay. Two point zero one. Two point zero zero one. Okay. Or if you want to choose another one, it will be 2.0001, okay? So that is how you decide. You, you decide some point which somehow looks like uh, it's approaching from the left and then uh, for, for this point, it's approaching from the, from the right, okay? Is it clear? You don't have to follow uh, exactly on how the books uh, choose their uh, their values of x. You can decide your own, but that is how normally I decide. Okay, and then uh, and then after that, after you decide the value of x, you can use your calculator. You can use your calculator to find the values for each uh, um, for y for each of the for the x that you have uh, decided. Okay. And then uh, somehow after, after you have uh, done that, you will see the pattern. You will see the pattern, the pattern for the values in your table, okay? Um, and uh, from the table which is given here, you can actually uh, see that as x approaching two from the left, it will be somehow 2.997001. And from the right here, it will somehow give you like 3.003001. Both, both values is somehow are somehow approaching to the values 3. Okay, you know that from the left, the limit of uh the limit of f as x approaching 2 from the left. So this is this is super index negative super index negative means that it's approaching from the left from the left so we see it from here so if it is approaching x from uh tends to two from the left somehow it will be equal to three we observe it from the table okay? and then uh from the table as well we see that the limit f as x approaching two from the right Two super index positive. It is from the right. Okay. It is also equal to three. Okay. If they are the same, 
from the right as well as from the left are the same it means that it means that the limit exists okay the limit exists and the limit f as x tends to 2 is equal to this values 3. If they are not the same, let's say the first one from the left is equal to 3, but from the right it is somehow equal to 4. They are not the same. One is 3, another one is 4. So what will be the limit of f as x tends to 2? So the answer will be does not exist instead of 3. If they are the same, only for the case when they are the same, they are at this, and the limit will be these two values, which is somehow equal to 3. So that is how you find the limit of f as x approaching to, let's say, x0. When I say x0, it means that any, any constant. Okay, you can do it by using table, but for the case of polynomial, you don't have to do it. You already know that the properties of a polynomial is they have uh, the polynomial have a very unique properties that is it's always it's always defined everywhere from negative infinity up to infinity, and the, the and the values of the limit will be equal to f two, f of two. Okay, it means that without having to um, to do this kind of table, you can just substitute what will be the values when x is equal to 2. So if you substitute f of 2, it will be equal to 3. So that is your value. Okay? Is it clear? Okay? So somehow uh, this yeah. example here show you the general way on how to find the limit uh, Maybe if not only for a polynomial, but for any other function as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's continue with our example two. Uh, so our example two now is x minus one divided by the square root of x minus one. And we have to find the limit for that function uh, as x tends to one. Okay. And uh, this function here is somehow not a polynomial like in our previous example so the only hope that we can do not our only hope actually the only hope when if you if you don't have a lots of knowledge in calculus yet okay uh, is by using table table form okay uh we you cannot substitute straight away uh x equal to one if you try to do it like you and you you handle it like this is a polynomial it won't work so let's say you try to substitute x equal to one one minus one and for the that uh, the numerator will be give you zero isn't it for the denominator square root of one minus one it will give you zero for the denominator equal to zero okay the function won't define, okay, isn't it? But it will define if the limit x tends to other values. So let's say x tends to, let's say, 2, then it is fine. But if uh, somehow x tends to 1, for this case here, it will, it will be undefined because our denominator will be 0. So the only hope for you, for for you, I mean, uh, before before you you have uh, you have any other knowledge on how to um, simplify this function, okay, is by using table, okay. So like before, you have x tends to one from the left and x tends to 1 from the right, right, okay, so from the left you choose 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999, and here you have 0 0.999, and uh, from the right you have 1.01, 1.001, 1 
And uh, the final values that you take here is 1.00001. Okay. And then after that, you press your calculator and get the values for all this. Okay. And uh, if you observe this, the values, uh, you see that the limit of F as X tends to x tends to 1 from the left is equal to 2, okay? And from the right as well, okay? So the limit of f as x tends to 1 from the right. So this is for x tends to 1, super index positive. They give you, they're giving you the same values, which is equal to 2. So it means that our limit of f as x tends to 1 is equal to 2 because they, they give you the same, the same values, okay? So that is how you do it. But uh, since this is not a polynomial, you cannot say that this one is equal to f of f of 1. You cannot say that because we will have singularity, okay? You, you can check actually, uh, there's, there's several uh, steps th that you can do uh, before you can, uh, if you are given this kind of uh, problems. Uh, I think um, the first one, I think, uh, let me mention it here. The first one is try to substitute. So if, let's say, uh, you have to find the limit of f as x tends to, okay, can I recopy the function? x minus 1, square root of x minus 1. So the function is x minus 1, square root of x, square root of x minus 1. So this is the function. So the limit of f as x tends to 1. Okay, so bef before you start, you have to try. So this is what I normally do. Before you start, you try what will be the values of f of 1. Okay, f of 1. Because uh, the, the questions are is asking you for the limit as x approaching 1. So you, you can try... Uh, to find or to calculate uh, what will be F1. Is it defined? Is there any values of F or not? In, uh, in this case, if you try to find F of 1, it will give you undefined, right? It will be undefined. It will be undefined. Okay, so you stop, uh, you, you, you skip this one. You skip this one. And then is it possible for you? So th this is the first step. This is what I always do. So first, and then the second one. Is it possible for you to simplify this function? When I say simplify, it means that, it means that we want to get rid of the denominator. We want to get rid of the denominator. Why do we want to get rid of the denominator? It is because we know that the first, uh, in our first step here, it doesn't give us any values is because of the denominator is somehow give us zero, right? So what happened if, if we can get rid of the denominator? We can simplify this function so that some, uh, the denominator is getting rid, then it might somehow give us a polynomial. Okay, so we want to simplify. Okay, this is uh, the step that I've always done. I'm, I'm, I'm not always start with table. I'm not always done with table because I don't have calculator. I honestly don't have calculator like you guys. Simplified. Okay, so for this one, the F is X minus 1. Divide by square root of x minus 1. Okay, it looks like we can simplify this because we know that uh, a squared 
minus b squared is equal to a minus b multiplied with a plus b. So this is the formula that we already know. Okay? I hope you know. I hope all of you already know. Um, okay? And then uh, this from this formula, you know that uh, the a here is x, the b is equal to 1. The a is equal to x, the b, sorry, the a is equal to the square root of x, the b is equal to 1. Okay? So from this, you know that uh, square root of x squared minus 1 squared, which will give you x minus 1, is equal to square root of x minus 1 multiply with square root of x plus 1. Okay? Okay? So from here, our numerator can be written as square root of x minus 1 square root of x plus 1. And then you divide with the denominator, square root of x minus 1. So what does it mean? So it means that our denominator here can be cancelled out with this one. Isn't it? Okay. So what is left here is square root of x plus 1. Once you get this, it's no more in terms of a rational function. You don't have the denominator now. Okay? Uh, once you get this kind of uh, function, you will try once again to substitute x equal to 1. Okay? What happened if you substitute f, sorry, x equal to 1? Does it still give you undefined? No. It will give, uh, it will give you 2, right? Uh, yes. So this will be the answer. This will be the answer after we simplify. So our limit our limit without having to to make this kind of table, we already already know that the limit of f as x tends to 1 is equal to 2 after we simplify. Right? So that is how, that is the step that I always apply uh, whenever we, we are asked about uh, limits. So the final one will be the limit of f as x tends to 1 is equal to 2. Okay? And then if this one still fail, it's like you still do, do not uh, get the simplified uh, function, the simplified uh, uh, functions of, 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 uh, of, of the original functions, or maybe it's still in terms of rational function, you cannot, still, you cannot get rid of the denominator, then you go to the third step, which is table form. So the table form is not always the first choice. The first choice is substitute. The second one is to simplify. The third one, then you go to the table. If all this, the two uh, steps fail. Okay? So uh, this one, you can simplify. Okay? Without having to do this, this kind of table. But of course, the table is... Uh, it's easy for you to do uh, for the validation, for the validation purposes. Just to validate that your, your, your answer is correct. Okay? Okay, next one. Uh, example three, use uh, numerical evidence uh, to make a conjecture uh, about the value of sine x divided by x as the limit x tends to zero. Okay? So if you try to substitute, okay, based on the three steps that I've mentioned, the first step is try to substitute, right? Right? Okay. 
So if you substitute x equal yeah. to zero, sine zero will give you zero. But the denominator still says x. Okay? Claudia, do you want to say something? Oh, sorry, doctor. Uh, unmute. Please unmute your, your microphone if you don't want to say something. Okay, uh, x, when x is equal to zero, the denominator will, will be zero. Okay? So we will have problem. The function is not defined for, for the case when the denominator is equal to zero. But there's one thing special about this function. Our numerator, which is sine x, will be zero as well when x is equal to zero. It's not only the denominator, but num our numerator, the upper parts, also is equal to zero. Okay? So, here, I will teach you one rule, which is very important rule, and it is called L'Hopital rule. I think the boot know that I'm, I was worded yesterday, I mean, uh, last week. So, somehow, the rules is called L'Hopital rule. It's, it's, it looks like hospital, but it is L'Hopital. Okay? So, for the L'Hopital rules, Okay, so limit, uh, so let's, uh, let's use the, the same uh, example here. So sine x divided by x. x tends to, x tends to 0. So if you substitute, it will give you 0 over 0. Okay, both numerator and denominator. For, for this kind of uh, case, this limit, this limit for this kind of function will be equal to the limit when you differentiate the numerator and the denominator separately. So if you differentiate a uh, numerator, it will give you cos x. The derivative of sine x is equal to cos x, right? Okay, the derivative of x will be equal to? 1. You differentiate x with respect to x. It will give you 1. Okay? So x will be equal to uh, tends to 0. This is equality sign. Okay? We can equate this to because the answer gives us 0 divided by 0. If the answer gives us like uh, other values, so maybe 2 divided by 0, then we cannot write this equality sign. We cannot say that the limit of this function is equal to the limit of the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. We cannot say that. It's only happening if it is 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. That's only for two case, cases and only. Okay, so if you, once you got this, you try to substitute. Cos 0 will give you 1. And for the denominator, it's already equal to 1. So the answer is equal to 1. Right. So, limit of uh, this function as x tends to 0 will be equal to 1. That is our... That is our first step. You try to substitute. You try to find uh, the limit. Okay? By using somehow L'Hopital rule. Okay? Do you have to simplify it? No, you don't have. Do you have to draw the, uh, to, to, um, to, to use this kind of table? This kind of table. I mean, they, they, they don't use the table. But somehow you can do the table if... If you don't know to use it, you don't know L'Hopital rule, you don't know, uh, obviously, if you substitute uh, x equal to 0, obviously, it will give you 0 over 0. Okay, so for the first step, it's already failed. You try L'Hopital rule, is uh, during the second step, which is simplifying. 
somehow it works. You don't have to continue or proceed with the with the with the third step, which is table form. Okay, but if you don't know L'Hopital rule, then you might continue with the table form. Okay, you you can try, but please be careful because uh, this act here is not the original. I mean the the standard coordinates. This is the radian we are talking about. So the choice of x is uh, different than our coordinates for, for x. Okay? Okay, th so th that is how you, you, you solve. Okay? Oh, okay, they have the table here. Okay? They have the table here. So if you look at the table here, so that is why I mentioned that it is not the the or the standard coordinate x. It is uh, the coordinate in terms of radian. Okay. Uh, so please be careful about that. And then somehow because it is already symmetric, then uh, the the book the author of the book somehow decide that you will have plus minus plus minus uh, for, I mean, the values is plus as well as minus. I think you, you can you can separate this. You can separate the plus and minus here to, to, to get clearer view on how you can get the value of y. Okay, is it okay? okay can we skip that one? Okay, okay, good. Okay, I think uh, that's it about uh, getting about the questions on getting uh, the values for the limit okay, and then we go to the one-sided limit one-sided limit is already uh, mentioned before uh, this uh, if you have x tends to zero super index positive it means that it will be from the right okay if you have x tends to zero from the left it, uh, sorry x tends to zero Super index negative, it will be uh, the limit approaching zero from the from the left. So plus is for the right, negative is for the left. Okay? And then here you have what? You have a step function, right? So this is a step function. Step function, huh? Uh, this is step function. Absolute value of x. Divide by x, okay, it is equal to 1, and then uh, another one, it will be negative 1. Uh, if x equal to 0, it will be undefined. If x is equal to 0, it will be undefined because you have denominator here. It will be what? It will be 0 divided by 0. It will be undefined. So that's why you have hollow dots. For the, for the graph here, you note that this is not full dots. It is not defined at x equal to 0. Okay? This is hollow dots. Okay, and then as x tends to 0 from the left, here, from the left, it will be equal to negative 1. As x tends to 0 from the right, you sorry, yeah, from the 0 from the right, it will be equal to 1. Okay? And then uh, from this uh, from this graph, we know that the limit from the left as well as from the right, they are not the same. So what is the conclusion that we can say about this? Does the limit of f as x tends to 0 exist or not? Does it exist? No. 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 Not because exist. the limit for the right, from the right as well as from the left, they are not the same. If they are the same, then they exist. If they are not, then it doesn't exist. Okay? So for this one, uh, it doesn't exist. So the conclusion is the limit of f as x tends to 0 does not exist. D and E. Okay? It does not exist. Okay, now um, somehow example four, we we have to explain. 
So this is the explanation, okay? Okay, now let's continue with the, the example five. Example five uh, consists of several uh, graph. We have three graph here. As appear in front of my eyes here, we have three, three graph. Um, the first graph is this one. Okay, we have hollow dots here, we have hollow dots here, and we have full dots here. So, from this uh, graph here, try to make, uh, to write all the information for the explaining this graph mathematically. Okay, so if you look at here, the first one that you notice is the limit. So, so I'm talking about the first graph here. First graph. Okay, first graph. So the limit of F as X tends to, X is approaching what? It is approaching A. It is approaching A from, from which side? From the left. Super index negative. It is equal to what? What value? It is equal to, what is the value for the limit of F as, as X tends to A? One. One. It is equal to 1. Yes, correct. So this is our first, uh, first information that we gain from this graph. The second one, limit of F as X approaching A from the right. What will be the values? Yeah. Three. Oh, yeah. Three. The answer yeah. is three. Okay. And then if you compare these two graphs, uh, sorry, two values, are they the same? No. no. So what is no. the conclusion? The limit of F as X does, tends to no. A. Does not exist. Does, does not exist. Does not exist. Are, are there any other information from this graph? Did you miss something? That's one thing that you, you're still missing, which is what is the value of f of f of a? It's also Two. given in this graph, which is equal to? Two. Two. Yes, because we have full dots. Two. So f of a is equal to two. So these are the info, the infos which are given in this first graph. So the limit of f as x approaching a from the left, that it is equal to one. From the right, it is equal to three. X approaching a, it doesn't exist. F of a is equal to two. Okay. And then, uh, and then what? And then uh, if you look at the the graph, if you walk along along this graph, do you have to jump? Do you have to jump if you if you walk along the graph? Yes. yes. You have to jump yes. to go to the other side, right? So what does it mean? The graph is not continuous. The graph is not continuous. Okay, what about the second graph? For the second graph, this one is the same. This one as well. Uh, for this one as well, it's the same. It does not exist because they are not the same. From the left and the right, they are not the same. And what about f of a? f of a is somehow equal to 1, one. one. instead of yes. two. 2. Instead of yes. 2, it is equal to 1. one. Okay, mm. So that is the only difference. And then for the third graph here, these two are like in the previous graph, okay? From the left and from the right, it does not exist as well because they are not the same. F of A is not given. There's no full dots. It means that it is, the function is not defined at x equal to 2. You understand what I mean? There's no f of a. f of a does not define. 
for 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 the third graph f of a does not define but for for the second graph f of a is defined and it is equals equal to one okay so these are the difference uh, this is how you translate a graph mathematically okay and uh, all the three graph is not uh, they are not continuous graph because you, you have to jump. Okay, next. Next, let's continue with example 6. For the example 6, how, how do you translate this mathematically? Okay, how do you translate? For the first one, can you... Limit. Hmm? Limit. Limit F as X tends to A from the left. Yes. What is the value for the first graph? Two. The value? Two. It is equal to two. Yeah. Uh, yes. Correct. Limit of f as x tends to a from the right, it is equal to two, two as two. well. So yes. does it exist? Yes. So the yes, limit exists. of f as x tends to a exists and it is equal to two. What about f of 2? f of 2, does it exist? It does not exist. Oh, not exist. Okay. Does not exist. Okay. f of 2, sorry, f of a. Sorry, this is f of a. f of a does not exist because it is a hollow dot. It's yes. a hollow dot. This one, f of a does does it exist? Yes. For, yes. For, it, it exists, but somehow f of a is equal to three. three. It is equal to three. And uh, for the other uh, limits, they are the same like in the previous graph. Okay, we still yes. have the limit of f as x tends to a from the left, it is equal to two. From the right, it is equal to 2. So the limit of f as x tends to a will be equal to 2 as well. Okay? Mm -hmm. This one, it is equal to 2 and f of a is equal to 3. If you walk along this graph here, do you have to jump? Yes. Yes, so yes. Even though there's only one point which, which, is, uh, which gives you a problem, you still have to jump. Okay, you still have to jump. You still have to jump. It means that this graph is not a continuous function. It is not a continuous function. It means that it is not a continuous function. Okay, so what, uh, what you can say about continuous function is a continuous function is when you have f of a is equal to the limit of f as x tends to a. If these two are the same, then it will be continuous function. If f of a is equal to 2, which is equal to the limit of f as x tends to a, your full dots here will be moved towards these hollow dots. Right? So yes. that is continuous function. It's the same like in the third graph. For the third graph, you will have the limit of f as x tends to a from the left is equal to 2. From the right, it is equal to 2. So it means that the limit exists, which is equal to 2, right? Yes. Okay, and then f of a here is equal right. to 2. Yeah. You don't see the full dots, but somehow, actually, it is full dots here. There's no hollow dots means that it is full dots. It means that it is defined there. Okay, so f of a is equal to 2. So this is a continuous function. Continuous functions is when the limit of f as x tends to a is equal to f of a. So that is how you define a continuous function. Please remember that. <laughs> okay? Um, that's it. Uh, can we have like five minutes break? Okay, can we have five minutes break? Okay, yes. okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. okay
let's have another five uh, another five minutes break okay okay another then. five minutes break okay uh
Okay, uh, let's continue. Okay. Okay, now we go to the infinite limit. <coughs> um, the infinite limit. Are you? Can some of you um, please uh, mute your, your microphone? Is it okay now? Okay, you, you can uh, switch on your video, but please mute your microphone, especially when you don't want to talk, okay? Because it will disturb uh, my delivery. Okay, um, let's say here you have a function y equal to one over x. So this is a reciprocal function. So it is a reciprocal function. Um, reciprocal in, in 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 Malay what we call it function fungsi uh, I forgot already salingan okay huh? salingan salingan yeah. I think salingan is uh, the correct word reciprocal saling salingan yeah I think yeah Salingan is reciprocal. Okay, dalam bahasa Melayu it is called salingan. Reciprocal is uh when you say um uh so somehow the love uh for for you is somehow reciprocate uh, something like that. It means that 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 person reply reply the love. It, it could be that you, you love that part, that person but somehow the person doesn't like you. It's also happened. Okay, Recipro reciprocal means that you bersaling, saling, bersayang-sayang. Macam tu lah, eh? something like that. So, I think uh, reciprocal is uh, salingan. Betul lah tu. Okay, um, okay now, <coughs> this is a reciprocal function. Uh, y is equal to 1 over x. Okay, so this is the graph. If you look at the graph, you see that the graph is not defined at x equal to 0 x is x, at x equal to zero f of zero does not define <clears throat> there is no a full dots at x equal to zero and other than that the graph is not touching the y axis as well so it means that uh f of zero does not define Okay, so that is one property that we observe from the graph. Other than that, <clears throat> as x approaching 0 from the right, we know that uh, somehow the function of y is increasing without bound. The function of y is increasing without bound. And as x approaching 0 from the left, the function of y is decreasing without bound as well. Okay? <clears throat> or mathematically, so that is how we say it, but mathematically we can write it as the limit of 1 over x as x tends to 0 from the right, 0 positive, it is equal to plus infinity. This is increase without bound, plus infinity. As limit of 1 over x as x tends to 0 from the left it is equal to negative infinity so this is increase without bound okay so um <clears throat> so does the limit of f as x tends to 0 exist or not the limit of f as x tends to 0 does not exist why is that it does not exist not because one is plus infinity another one is negative infinity if both are positive infinity still does not exist because the first infinity plus the first plus infinity and maybe the second plus infinity they are not the same values okay you understand what i mean 
<clears throat> in this case, it is clear that the, it does not exist because you might say that like, one is plus, another one is negative, negative infinity. So it is uh, obvious for you because they are not the same. But in case both of you, both, both of them, both of them somehow give you plus infinity, another one also give you plus infinity, still the answer for the limit of f as x tends to zero positive it still does not exist because we cannot confirm that the first plus infinity and the first second sorry the second plus infinity they are the same plus infinity is just uh it's just a <clears throat> a symbol to say that we have a very large number okay but a very the first very large number and the second very large number they might be uh not the same values they might not take the same values you understand what i mean okay so that's why <clears throat> you cannot say that infinity minus infinity is equal to zero the first infinity so let's say you have here my, my infinity minus infinity this is obviously not equal to zero if you say that it is equal to zero, then it is wrong. Why is that? Because the first infinity is not the same as the second infinity. Okay. Um, okay. So this is uh, this is how you illustrate. Uh, I mean, uh, you you extract the info from from the graph from the graph of the reciprocal function. And then after that, you can try to uh, to make the table, okay? You to make the table. And the values that you are interested with is obviously when x is equal to zero, isn't it? When x is equal to zero is the values that you are interested with. So obviously, the center of this will be x equal to zero. And after that, you decide some values of x, uh which which are located at the left of zero and at the right of zero okay and after that uh, you calculate by using the calculator and see the patterns and if you look at here it will give you up to negative ten thousand here <coughs> if if you notice that it's increasing it's increase increase rapidly so it means that if you choose maybe other negative small number smaller than this values here it will somehow uh, give you f which is a very uh, um, uh, it could be like negative of a large number okay will give you a very uh, large number and it will have negative value okay <clears throat> so that that's it uh, about infinite limits so infinite limit is uh, when you have plus infinity or negative infinity for for the limits okay and for the plus and minus plus and minus infinity uh that kind of infinite limits it, uh, we can say uh the function of f, f <clears throat> for that kind of uh, values <clears throat> it does not exist okay okay now okay now <clears throat> Now let's continue with the vertical asymptotes. Okay, vertical asymptotes is when uh, when you have uh, infinite limits. Okay? If you look at uh, if you look at the first graph, if you look at the first graph here, um, please always off your 
your your microphone because it will disturb your friend not only disturb me okay and i will record this uh this video if you want you always want to um to come out from the meeting room uh, please don't do so i i advise you to come out uh uh, sorry, come in uh, at the very beginning of our class or else please ca don't come in. Just watch my recorded video, okay? Because it will disturb. Okay, um, so let's, uh, let's uh, look at this figure here, okay? If you look at this figure, we, will, we, we see that we have infinite limits for x tends to a from the left. Limit x tends to limit of f as x tends to a from the left, it somehow gives you positive infinity. It somehow gives you positive infinity here in this case. For the first uh for the first figure. Okay. For the second one, the limit of f as x tends to a from the right. So for the second one, the limit of f x tends to a from the right is equal to plus infinity. Okay? So, okay, please, huh? please mute your microphone. I cannot focus on the teaching if you keep on... Uh, Keep on. I, I'm not sure uh, why uh, is it automatically on or what, but somehow it disturbed. Okay. Um, and I I cannot focus on delivering. It might be easy for you because you're just listening, but it's not easy. If if the lecturer is keep. Uh, well, what is happening actually? Tan Kim Yuan. Uh, if if you are having problems, then I, I I I would suggest that if you have a technical problem, I would suggest that you watch the recorded video instead of disturbing your friends and me this delivering this uh the lecture okay please okay because i will upload all the recorded video in youtube so it doesn't give you problems for you to assess the video afterwards okay um let's continue Okay, so, so for that kind of problem, when we have infinite uh, limits, like in the first graph here, you have an uh, infinite limit as x tends to a from the left, and here you have x tends to a from the right, you have infinite limit as well. The, the graph is increasing, is increased um, boundedlessly, okay? Uh, then for that kind of problem, you actually have a vertical asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes is uh, illustrated as this um, as this line here, this red line. Okay, so this red line here is called vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote is when you have uh, infinite limit as x approaching that value a okay so the vertical asymptote is is really when x is equal to a the vertical asymptote is when x is equal to a so that is the whole line that is for the whole line here x is equal to a we call it as vertical asymptotes it's the same for the second graph it's the same for the third graph as well 
This is uh, when you have uh, x limit of f as x tends to a uh, from the left, okay? It is equal to negative infinity, okay? And it also happens when x, uh, when, uh, sorry, for, for the fourth graph here. Okay, now uh, let's continue with uh, example eight. For the example eight, uh, the questions ask us to look at this uh, graph here, okay, and, and answer all this based on this graph here, okay? So for A, limit of F as X tends to negative two, so negative two, so negative two is over here, from the left, what will be the values? Okay, limit of f as x tends to negative 2 from the left. Okay, so if you look at here, this is equal to 1. So the answer for a is equal to 1. Okay, and then uh, for the second one, for the b, limit of f as x tends to negative 2 from the right. So for the for, for B here, negative 2 from the right, the answer will be negative, negative 2, isn't it? Yes. Negative two. Yes. Okay, so the answer will be negative 2. Are they the same? Are they the same? No. One give you 1, another one give you negative 2. So the limit of F as X tends to negative 2 does not exist okay so that is the conclusion that we get from a and and then a and b okay what about c what well, uh for c the questions ask us for the limit of f as x tends to zero from the left zero from the left so it is over here the answer will be zero zero okay good Okay, then we have limit of f as x tends to zero from the right. From the right, it gives you what? Negative, negative infinity. Here, it will decrease, decrease uh, rapidly here, unboundedly. Okay, it, is, uh, it will give you negative infinity. And then for E, okay, so one is uh, zero, another one is negative infinity. So does it exist for the limit of F as X tends to zero? It doesn't. does not exist. It doesn't exist. Oh, okay, for the, for the E, limit of F as X tends to four, four negative, four from the left. So if you look at this um, carefully, it somehow oscillates oscillation function it's like this it's oscillates so can you decide the values when it is oscillating no you no. cannot decide okay it does not exist due to the oscillation it's oscillation or oscillate like this it's like periodic function okay you cannot decide the values Okay, and then uh, the limit of f as x tends to fall from the right, it will be equal to plus infinity. Okay, so this one is plus infinity. So for g, the questions ask us for the vertical asymptotes of the graph of f. So like before, I've mentioned that the vertical asymptotes is happens when you have infinite limit, right? So at at how many points that you have infinite limit? What about this one? Two. This one gives you negative infinity, right? Yes. So you will have infinite limit at x, sorry, vertical asymptotes at x equal to zero. What about other places? Four. When x equal to four, right? Another yes. one is when x equal to four. So there are two vertical asymptotes for this graph of f, one is x equal to four, another one is x equal to zero. The y as this here is actually the same as x equal to four. x equal to four is the same as y as this. So in other words, this y as this here is actually x equal to zero. Okay, that's it.
Okay, good. I hope uh, you can still catch up with me. Okay, now let's continue with computing limits. Okay. Um, sum basics limit. Okay. So for the sum basic limit, I think this is uh, not something difficult for you to follow. Uh, limit k x tends to a is equal to k. So the function f here is equal to k. k is a constant. So let's say you are given like uh, limit 3 x tends to 4. What will be the values? Can you substitute any uh, when x equal to 4 here? There's, there is no x. So how are we going to substitute this? So the answer will be equal to 3, isn't it? Okay. Yes. If you have, let's say, limit 3x as x tends to 4, you substitute uh, x equal to 4 in here, it will give you 12. So that's why for the first theorem here, limit k, k is a constant, x tends to a, whatever values of a here, it doesn't change. The fact that the limit will be equal to k. It, is, it will give you 3 in this case. Okay? In this case, it will give you k because it is a constant. Okay? For b, you just have to substitute what will be the values when x equal to a. So the answer will be a. What about this one? This is a reciprocal function. What you have done uh, in our previous example before for the reciprocal function. If I were you, I will draw the graph of a reciprocal function. So this is the graph of the reciprocal function. As x tends to zero from the left, what will be what will happens to the graph of f? It will decrease unboundedly, right? So it, the answer will be negative infinity. Okay. Uh, limit of one over x as x tends to zero plus here it is equal to plus infinity. Okay. Okay. Good. Then uh, here you have uh, example one. Okay, for the example one, um, the questions ask us to find the limit 3 as x tends to negative 25. If you try to substitute x equal to negative 25, there is no variable x, okay? So it stays as 3. It's a constant. So this one as well, this one as well. So they are when? They are for for the first uh, theorems. Okay. And then uh, for, for the example 2, x tends to 0. You substitute x equal to 0, you get 0. And this one, you get negative 2. And this, you get pi. Okay. It's nothing difficult. Okay. Okay, now uh, let's continue. I think you can read this. This is just reciprocal function. Okay. Um, uh, for, for the next one is theorems. Theorems 1.2.2. Okay. For 1.2, so you have a limit f as x tends to a is equal to L1. Limit of g x tends to a is equal to L2. If you have uh, the questions ask you for the limit of f plus g, okay, you, you have to segregate. Segregate uh, each of the uh, graph, uh, sorry, each of the limits. Limit of f x tends to a plus Limit of G stands to A. Okay. It's the same for minus as well. Okay. And for G, for G, you can also segregate for, sorry, for, for product. For product, you can also uh, segregate. For the division, it's also work uh by uh segregating provided that l2 is not equal to zero okay 
Okay, so uh, let's try to do for example four. So, so here, sorry, let's let's look at example five. It's nothing difficult as well actually. For x equal to for limit x squared minus four x plus three, x tends to five. Okay. You you sub you substitute x equal to five in the uh, equations expression here. You will get what? You straight away will get twenty five minus uh, twenty plus three. Okay, plus three. So the answer will be will be eight. Will be eight. Okay, and then um, and then the answer of it, which is eight, is actually equal to the limit of x squared minus the limit of four x plus the limit of three, which is the segregation of each of the expressions. Okay, if you try to to segregate each of the component, you will still get the same answer, which is eight. And then here, for example, 7, if you substitute x equal to 2, you will get what? Uh, 5, 2, 2 cubed plus 4, so 8. 8 might uh, multiply with 5, 40. 40 plus 4, 44. 44 divided by negative 1. So the answer will be negative. 44. Okay, I think it's nothing difficult. You can try at home. Uh, what about this one? You can try to do it at home as well, this one. If you have problem with this, uh, try to apply what uh, the step that I've mentioned before. The first one is by substituting. The second one is try to simplify. And if it still fail, then you can continue with by using table form. Okay. Example 9, for the example 9, 3x equal to 3. If you substitute, obviously, the denominator will be 0. So the first step is already gone. Okay, you might want to try simplifying. Okay, try to simplify. So is it possible for you to simplify? Yes. For this case, x squared minus 6x plus 9 is just x minus 3 squared. Okay. So after you simplify this, you can cancel out the denominator. Once it is cancelled, then it's fine. You can substitute. So the first, the second step, which is simplifying, works for this a. Okay. Any questions? I think uh, I think it's uh, manageable for you to understand. Okay. For b, uh, for b, if you substitute x equal to negative four. Negative 4 squared, 16, plus 4, sorry, minus 4, minus 12. So the denominator will be 0. So if you substitute, the, den the denominator will be 0. So try simplify. Is it possible for you to simplify this? Okay. So for if you look at uh, the solution B here, Somehow, it gives you x plus 4 and x minus 3, isn't it? This is just factorization. I hope you are already mastering uh, factorization because you will use a lot, especially when you try to simplify the function. Okay. If you have here, okay, once you have here x plus 4, x minus 3, you know that you can cancel out x plus 4 x if you substitute x equal to negative 4 in here the denominator is it still equal to 0 no no 
So the answer is negative 2 div divided by 7. Okay. Okay, what about C? So the C. The C, once you got this, it will still give you zero for the denominator, right? Once you reach here. Once you reach here, reach here if you substitute x equal to 5, the denominator will still give you zero. Okay. So how are you going to handle that? I think uh, if you reach here and you know that the denominator is equal is still equal to zero, then if I were you, then I will continue with the table form without having to justify the plus and minus if, whether it is equal to zero or not. I think this is more difficult than just look at the table. Okay, so please continue with the table. Proceed with the table. Okay. Okay, and then radicals, limits involving radicals. So for this one, uh, if you substitute, you get 1 minus 1, the denominator will be 0. Okay, so the second step is by what? We have done this before, right? I think we have simplifying, simplified this. And by simplifying, we get this one. You substitute x equal to 1 in this, it will give you 2. I think we have done that the same even is the same a uh, function okay and then example 11 11 uh, is a step function or some of you might call it piecewise piecewise defined function they are the same what whether you call it step function or piecewise okay so fx 1 divided by x plus 2 x squared minus 5 and square root of x plus 13. Okay, so uh, there are three, three uh, functions here which define the original fx. Okay, so uh, let's say the questions ask you for the limit of f as x tends to negative 2, you have to choose the correct function from these three functions, okay? So for the limit of f as x tends to negative two, uh, before you get this one, obviously you, you have to check for the limit of f as x tends to negative two from the right, and the limit of f as x tends to negative two from the, sorry, from the left, and as well as from the right, okay? Uh, so for, for x tends to negative 2, from the left, you have to consider this function. This function, f. The first one. The f here is the first one. Okay? 1 over x plus 2. Negative 2 from the left. Negative 2 plus 2 will give you denominator equal to? zero is it yeah yes will give you denominator equal to zero so what is your other choice is it possible for you to simplify no no if no then you have to use table form you have to use table form for this part only for this function only for the first function only and it's only for negative two from the from the left. Okay, you might want to choose, let's say, negative three up to, and here if it is negative two, you might want to choose up to what negative two point zero zero one. Okay, what well, what will be the values of f as x tends to x is equal to negative two. 0 0.001 okay and that will be your limit that will be your your limit 
And then uh, for li the limit of f as x tends to negative 2 from the right. From the right means that we have to choose this function here. This function x squared minus minus 5. x squared minus 5 is a polynomial function of order 2. Of order 2. So you can substitute. It's always defined everywhere. Okay, so the limit of f as x tends to negative 2 is equal to f of f of 2. So the answer will be what? Negative 1, right? 2 squared minus 5. So the answer will be negative 1. So we compare. Does it? This one, what is the value for this one? You can check by using table. Is this, is this clear? Is this clear or not? Okay. Once you get from the table, or you can choose negative uh, 2.0001. Okay. Okay, can you please check with uh, for me? What will be the values for f? of negative 2.001. Is it a negatively large number or positively large number or what? If it is negatively large number, then we can conclude that the limit is going to negative infinity. Negatively hmm? large number. Negatively large number. Negatively large number. So it is this one. For, for this part here, it is negative infinity. You can conclude like that. Okay, so one is negative infinity, another one is negative one. Are they the same? No. So it means that the limit of f as x tends to negative two does not exist. Does not exist. What about the, the, the b? Limit of f as x tends to zero. x tends to zero is defined for the second interval here for the second interval. And yet we know that it is a polynomial. It is defined by a polynomial. So obviously the limit of f as x tends to zero is equal to f of zero. If you substitute f of zero here, it will give you negative five. So this is the answer, negative five. Because of this is a polynomial. And then you have x tends to 3. Okay, for this part here, you have to check as x tends to 3 from the left as well as x tends to 3 from the right. As x tends to 3 from the left, the second function is the function that we have to consider. Uh, x tends to 3 from the right, this is the function that we have to consider, the third one. The third one. So if you substitute x equal to 3, inside here you will have 9 minus 5, which give you 4, right? It will give you 4. For, for the x tends to 3 negative. For x tends to 3 positive, uh, it will give you what? 3 oh. plus... 16, 4, 4 as well. So it gives you the same answer. So the limit of f as x tends to 3 is equal to 4. Because they are the same. Left, from the left as well as from the right, they give you the same answer. Okay? Any questions? Okay. If you have anything that you want to ask related to this piecewise uh, function, please let me know now. The key is to to decide which function that you want to choose. So let's uh, if you look at uh, for C here, 
you know that for x tends to 3 from the left, for the first interval, sorry, the second and the third interval is something that you want to look at, the second and the third one, but for x tends to 3 from the left, you should deal with the second one. You should deal with the second one. And x tends to 3 from the right, you know that you should deal with the, with the third one. Okay? Okay, limits at infinity. I think let's stop our class. It's already near to one o'clock. Okay. Uh, we will continue our second class um, from 1.3. So we stop at 1.3 and we continue it again uh, next week. At the same time, 11, sorry, 10, 10, 10 a.m. each Saturday. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, that's it. Uh, I, hope, I hope there is no questions. Uh, you, you can still ask if you have to, but I hope uh, it is uh, easy for you to understand. Um, and did anything else? You want to say something? No? If uh, no questions, then uh, let's end this uh, class or this meeting. Uh, I think uh, uh, anything you want to say? Um, I think that's it. I don't have anything else to say. Okay? So you can uh, proceed with uh, by leaving the meeting room. I still have Thank uh, you, a lot of things to do here. Like my doctor, can, 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 can I ask Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor.